Hey, it's Will here for HairGuard. In this video, I'm gonna reveal the three most powerful, proven ways to boost minoxidil so you can regrow hair faster. In fact, studies have shown that one of these boosters alone can literally increase the effectiveness of minoxidil by a whopping 3.3 times. So yes, that's more than triple the results. Triple the number of new hairs being regrown in the same amount of time. So if you've done any research about hair loss, then you would have come across minoxidil. It's the most popular hair loss treatment in the world and the first FDA approved treatment for hair loss ever. However, unfortunately, minoxidil is just not very effective for a lot of people. In fact, a study found 86% of minoxidil users quit after just a few years. Did you know minoxidil was only ever approved for use on the crown and the top of the scalp, never actually on the hairline? So let me ask you, are you thinking about using minoxidil? Have you used it in the past and just given up? Or you're just using it now, but you'd like better results, more hair regrowth and faster results? Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, then this video is for you. These are the three most powerful proven ways to boost minoxidil and make it just much more effective. In fact, I'd say you're practically wasting your time with minoxidil if you're not using at least one of these boosters. So what are the three minoxidil boosters that take this treatment from zero to hero? Let's get into it. Number one, microneedling. So on its own, minoxidil will work for around one out of two people who try it. The other half will basically see no results whatsoever. But even if you're in the lucky half where it does work, the results are generally pretty modest. Minoxidil 2% gives around eight new hairs per centimeter squared, ranking it among the least effective hair loss treatments on the market. Using 5% solution gives noticeably better results, around 15 hairs per centimeter squared, roughly as equivalent as oral finasteride within six months. If you add finasteride to your minoxidil topical, you can push this figure up to about 19 hairs, but with the obvious risk of more severe side effects. Well, it turns out there is one very easy, proven and effective way to get even better results. If you add just one weekly microneedling session to your minoxidil treatment, you get what is probably the single most effective treatment on the market today, according to the studies, a whopping 50 new hairs per centimeter squared. This was first observed in a 2013 study out of India. and has since been replicated in numerous other studies. Microneedling is so effective that it even works on its own without the minoxidil. But the effect really starts to multiply if you combine the two together. And the beauty is it's so simple. Once a week, you do not apply any minoxidil to your head whatsoever. Instead, what you do that day is your weekly microneedling session using a one to 1.5 millimeter derma roller. And for those of you who don't already have a derma roller, I've linked to our very own hair guard derma roller in the description. Just cover the postage and we'll send you the derma roller for free. In the description, I've also linked to our comprehensive 25 minute micro needling mega guide. It's worth checking out if you're interested in trying this treatment. Okay, so that's micro needling. Let's move on to the next booster. Number two, stacking the base solution. Minoxidil at this point has been on the hair loss market for almost 35 years. And to date, it's the only topical product the FDA has approved. But do you really think that during all this time, we haven't found other things that work too? 35 years later, and we still can't beat Minoxidil. Of course not. To the contrary, after Rogaine came on the market, research on other topicals exploded. We now know of several other treatments, including many natural ones that can stimulate hair growth too. The reason that none of these have been FDA approved is that it requires massive amounts of money, which nobody outside Big Pharma can afford, especially when you're dealing with natural treatments that just can't be patented. There's simply no motive for anyone to do it to seek FDA approval. Now I will give you just two examples of active ingredients you can combine with minoxidil to boost those results. The first is adenosine. This is a naturally occurring substance in our body that we can safely apply topically without side effects. I actually made an entire video 
just about adenosine for hair, which I've linked to in the description. In vitro studies have found that it upregulates the expression of certain growth factors that support hair follicle growth. These same growth factors also promote the anagen growth phase of the hair cycle, making the hair grow longer. In a six month study that compared adenosine to minoxidil, fully 69% of balding men who were treated with topical adenosine reported being satisfied with the treatment. This actually compared to only 28% of those treated with minoxidil. So from a user satisfaction standpoint, adenosine seems to be on par or even better than minoxidil. Caffeine is another underrated topical ingredient that we now know for a fact stimulates hair growth and with little to no side effects. Depending on the metric you use, studies with balding men find it gives results in up to 80% of men who apply it topically. Other studies that compared it directly with minoxidil found that it is approximately just as effective. A large 2017 randomized controlled trial compared twice daily minoxidil versus twice daily caffeine solution. And after six months, the men in the minoxidil group had an average of 11.7% increase in the percentage of hairs that were in the active growing phase, the so-called anagen phase. This compared to 10.6% for the caffeine group. So the difference was so small that the researchers didn't deem it statistically significant. In other words, the two treatments were basically just as effective. And caffeine obviously has minimal side effects. Given results like these, it simply makes no sense to be using minoxidil on its own, when you could be adding other safe and effective ingredients into the formulation to get that synergistic effect. Caffeine and adenosine work through slightly different pathways than minoxidil, so it's likely they can combine synergistically to produce better results than when used alone. And the good news is you don't have to worry about making this stuff yourself. In the description, I've linked to our very own Max Oxidil. Max Oxidil contains the most powerful combination of caffeine, adenosine, along with other minoxidil boosters, namely zinc, oleic acid, azelaic acid, which helps block DHT topically. Now, Max Oxidil is way more powerful than standard minoxidil, and it's formulated to be easily absorbable non-greasy and non-itchy. Try it out and see for yourself how much better it works. Maxoxidil is like minoxidil, but with maximum power. All right, moving on to the third minoxidil booster. Number three, using a scalp brush each time before applying the topical. This might actually be one of my favorite minoxidil boosters because it's so simple, cheap, and enjoyable. You really can go as hard or soft as you like, but the main goal is to invigorate the surface of the scalp before the liquid goes on, right? So you really dig it into the scalp. The brush helps remove dead skin, sebum, dirt, and oils, and unclog the pores, and it's very effective at doing so. You can even see the gunk coming off. If you use the brush for a while, there will be a buildup of plaque on the underside of the brush here. If you use the scalp brush for a while, you'll notice the skin starts going a little red, which is a good sign that you're doing it right. If you actually brush hard in the areas of hair loss. You'll also feel a difference when you apply the topical because it may actually sting a little bit the first few times. You can just tell the liquid is penetrating more into the dermis. Any minoxidil that doesn't manage to go through the epidermis is practically useless and it's just a pure waste of liquid. So brushing the scalp really helps the liquid get to the part of the scalp where it actually takes effect on the hair follicle itself. I'd use one of these brushes even if I wasn't applying a topical because it helps clear the scalp pores and it can be used to massage the entire scalp at the same time. You can get the scalp brush for free on HairGuard, just help cover the cost of shipping. So I highly, highly recommend using one of these if you're using any sort of topical. Unlike microneedling, using the scalp brush is not painful or irritating at all. In fact, like I quite like the feeling, it feels pretty nice. If you've never tried it before, the first time you use it, you'll be surprised by how much gunk comes off your scalp. Okay, so that's it for the three best ways to boost minoxidil. What I'd really recommend is combining all three of those boosters. Do microneedling once a week. Use Maxoxidil, which combines caffeine and adenosine and DHT blockers into one bottle. And use the scalp brush for a few minutes each day before you apply the topical. 
but there's actually one more bonus way, which I'm gonna call the bonus booster. And that's number four, getting to the root cause. Now, minoxidil on its own stimulates hair growth, and it can do this wherever in the body you apply it, not just the scalp. For example, you can use it to grow hair on your chest, on your beard, without even suffering from any kind of hair loss to begin with. So minoxidil is a general purpose hair growth agent, but it does not specifically treat the actual root cause of pattern hair loss, which is why it often doesn't work well on its own in the first place. But if you address the root cause of your hair loss whilst also using minoxidil, well, you can expect far better results. And the root cause of baldness, as we've discussed in lots of other videos, is a reduction in microvascular blood supply around the root of the hair follicle itself. This is why minoxidil works in the first place, because it's a vasodilator that improves circulation along with a few other mechanisms. But the effect from minoxidil is really very temporary. I mean, you're applying a liquid, it's literally a surface level increase in blood supply. It's better to get to the root cause, which means improving the blood supply throughout the entire scalp. In male pattern baldness, chronic tension from the underlying connective tissue is transmitted to the scalp skin. And it's this chronic state of tension that is linked to the inflammation and fibrosis that we see in all balding tissues, which then reduces the blood supply around the hair follicle bulb. So in other words, the tissue surrounding the follicles becomes chronically inflamed and microscopic scar tissue starts to form, which reduces the microvascular circulation. Imagine the hair follicle bulb being slowly squeezed whilst at the same time having less nutrients and oxygen to grow. Trying to stimulate the hair to grow without fixing the underlying tissue problems is a very ineffective strategy. It just feels like an uphill battle unless you're getting to the root cause. We know from the scientific studies that reducing scalp tension reverses the hair loss because scientists injected the scalp perimeter muscles with the substance that causes flaccid paralysis. And then the patient's hair started regrowing. In fact, it regrew a significant number of new hairs and the study has been repeated multiple times. That's not the only way to improve blood supply though. Scalp massages with your hands or with the hair guard automated scalp massager can also work very well. If you wanna boost minoxidil effectiveness, then look to improve the blood supply throughout the entire scalp using manual scalp massages or the Groband Pro, which is available at HairGuard. Get to the root cause of your hair loss and see your results multiply. Stack all four boosters together and you have a very powerful protocol for hair regrowth. That's what I've been using and it seems to work well. So that's it for this video. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic and also let me know which topic you want me to cover next in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to all the comments individually. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.